Good morning, and welcome to our Sunday devotional for July 3rd, 2022. Our silent meditation for this morning <clears throat> comes from Augustine, who says this, He that is kind is free, though he is a slave. He that is evil is a slave, though he be a king. <clears throat> We'll be talking today about being freed from and being freed for. For announcements, uh, the main thing I would mention, if you are local, if you'd like to join us next Sunday, July 10th, there will be a combined church service for both Salem and St. Paul's. It'll be held at the Cuppenhavers Pond in Spring Glen at 10.30. It'll be an outdoor service, <clears throat> although if it rains, we'll be holding the service in, in their garage, which is large enough to accommodate us, and it'll be followed by a picnic. So if you're local and you'd like to come, please join us. If you have any questions, please get a message to me and I can help you out, directions, things like that. Let's continue now. Oh, I should mention, <clears throat> this is a communion service. So you want to have your elements ready for when we get to the communion part of the service. <clears throat> Let's continue now with our service. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let's join in the Apostles' Creed for our profession of faith this morning. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, died, and was buried. He went to the dead. <clears throat> On the third day he rose again, entered into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life eternal. Amen. And please join me in the spirit of our prayer of invocation. Blessed are you, Lord our God. Glorious is your name in all the earth. We celebrate who you are and all that you have done for us. You hold our lives in your hands and catch us when we stumble. So we come together today, led by your Holy Spirit, to worship you, to sing your praise, to confess our mistakes, and to receive your love and mercy made possible through the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ. Be present among us as we worship you, and as we open ourselves to your word. <clears throat> to you be all glory, now and forever. Amen. We are called by Scripture to do good, to bear one another's burdens, to bring in a good harvest for the Lord. But this can quickly become tiring, and when our best efforts are frustrated, we can become discouraged and walk away from God's call. Let's join now in our prayer of confession. O oh God, we know that Jesus sent out his disciples without purse, luggage, or sandals. All too often, we find ourselves clinging to possessions we don't need looking for safety by avoiding risk, and bearing heavy burdens that slow us down. Forgive us for our reluctance to travel lightly through life, and heal us of our pain and guilt. Forgive us and heal us, O God. Holy One, the Apostle Paul encouraged the Galatians not to grow weary, but to use every opportunity to work for the good of all. <clears throat> and yet, hectic schedules, competing demands, cynicism, 
and doubt erode our commitment and leave us feeling burned out. Forgive us for any hollow excuses we are tempted to make and heal us of our exhaustion and discouragement. Forgive us and heal us, O God. Let's take a few moments now to reflect on this and for our own private confession. And amen. Now there is no wrong that God cannot forgive. There is no good work that God cannot re-energize us for. In God's mercy, we are forgiven, and we are gently challenged to continue doing good for others. Thanks be to God. We come next to our children's time. So I would invite you to gather the young people around the device if they're not already there. And we have a picture to look at here. And my gosh, actually one of the people here even looks familiar to me. What do we see? Well, we've got four young people. And it's pretty clear that they're gathering food for a food drive. <clears throat> They also have a can out in front, so if people don't have food to bring, they could donate some money that then you could buy food with. Right now, people are more in need across our nation and around the world than probably in a long time. There are lots of lines for different food pantries, so donations are necessary. But what I want you to think about is the fact that this is young people. These are young people who are gathering these donations and putting them in boxes and bringing them to the food pantry. They are doing something good. That is what Jesus calls us to do, to do good things for other people. Jesus will welcome us home one day. That is is a promise. But in the meantime, during our lives here, he wants us to do good for other people. And a food drive is just one example. <clears throat> I bet you can think of lots of things, good things you can do for other people. Maybe for your brothers or sisters, for your family, people at school, people in your neighborhood. Think about that. Talk with your parents. See if there's something good you can do. Amen. We come next to our prayers of the people. And certainly we want to remember the people of Ukraine as they continue in their struggle to defend their nation. Lord, we ask that if it be your will, you would bring an end to the war. But in the meantime, Lord, give the Ukrainian people courage and strength to do what is right to defend their nation. Also, Lord, at a time when a number of social issues are changing vastly and rapidly, we also see a lot of, a lot of anger and violence and frustration. So we pray that you would bring peace, that people can learn to talk with each other across their differences instead of fight. Amen. Now I would invite you to spend a few minutes, a few moments, in silent prayer for the people and concerns in your life. And amen. Lord, we know that you hear us when we pray. We ask that you would respond 
according to your wisdom and your mercy, and in your time. And hear us now, as we join in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever. Amen. We come next to our reading of Scripture, <clears throat> and we hear first, <clears throat> excuse me, from Psalm 30, beginning with verse 1. And the notation, the actual original notation, says, A psalm, a song at the dedication of the temple <clears throat> of David. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord my God, I cried to you for help, and you have healed me. O Lord, you have brought up my soul from Sheol, restored me to life from among those gone down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O you his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. By your favor, O Lord, you had established me as a strong mountain. Then you hid your face. I was dismayed. <clears throat> to you, O Lord, I cried, and to the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be gracious to me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy, so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. <clears throat> o Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. We hear next from Paul's letter to the Galatians. <clears throat> and here he says, My friends, if anyone is detected in a transgression, you who have received the Spirit should restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Take care that you yourselves are not tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. For if those who are nothing think they are something, they deceive themselves. All must test their own work. Then that work, rather than their neighbor's work, will become a cause for pride. For all must carry their own loads. Those who are taught the word must share in all good things with their teacher. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For you reap whatever you sow. If you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow to the Spirit, you will reap eternal life from the Spirit. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time <clears throat> if we do not give up. So then, whenever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all, and especially for those of the family of faith. And our gospel comes from Luke chapter 10, beginning with verse 1. <clears throat> After this, the Lord appointed seventy others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, <clears throat> The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this house. 
If anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there, and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to our feet we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you, listens to me. And whoever rejects you, rejects me. And whoever rejects me, rejects the one who sent me. The seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name, even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Here end our readings for this morning. Our message for today is entitled, Set Free to Do Good. Join me first in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Happy Fourth of July weekend! the time when we celebrate our nation's founding, when we finally got up the courage to tell old King George III of England, we're not going to take it anymore. Signing a Declaration of Independence in Philadelphia to confirm what the shot heard round the world had already set in motion over a year before, starting a war that would continue for five more years. And then finally, freedom from the tyranny of the king. Now we would expect that with all the energy and motion that had, uh, that had been expended and all the lives that had been sacrificed while fighting England, we would expect that the newly freed fledgling nation of the United States of America would celebrate their freedom from, from England, <clears throat> from the king, from taxation without representation, from military occupation by redcoats, and the abuse that accompanies every military occupation. Yep, we weren't going to take it anymore. And now, we didn't have to. We were freed from all of that. But only a fool would bask too long in the glow of our newly won freedom from all those things. Next steps had to be taken, and taken quickly. Form a government, create laws, choose leaders, create a guiding document. (laughs) By the way, the first one, the Articles of Confederation, that first document didn't work out too well. They scrapped it in 1789 in favor of the second attempt at a guiding document, the United States Constitution and Bill of Rights. Yes, the young United States couldn't keep celebrating freedom from. They had to take on the responsibility of governing themselves, defending themselves, protecting themselves, with no more help from England. In short, we needed to balance our freedom from with freedom for. Freedom for taking responsibility for ourselves. This process of recognizing that freedom from should lead to freedom for is the same process we find in our spiritual lives. When we first really get it, that our sins are forgiven, that we are not going to hell, 
that Jesus is taking care of everything for us and always will. When we first truly get all that, we may experience a spiritual high, knowing for the first time in our lives that we are free from all those things that used to separate us from God. And by the way, this revelation, this understanding that we are freed from our sin and its consequences, that can happen at any time during our lives. Some young people get it right away. Jesus loves me, and the confidence that in the end, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Done. Got it. Maybe this joyful awareness dawns on someone for the first time during confirmation, when they start to take things seriously and make grown-up promises to God. Or maybe it happens later on. Or, yes, maybe the first time someone realizes that God's promises are real is when they are on their deathbed. Hey, better late than never. But regardless, whenever we first realize that Jesus has truly freed us from sin and punishment, it is a wonderful moment. It is a liberating moment, as if our whole lives we've been holding our breath, waiting to exhale, and now we can. And we can breathe in our first breaths of freedom. There is a lightness, a lifting of burden, maybe even a giddy joy we are freed from. But, just as with our ancestors of 200 years ago, we can't just sit back and enjoy this freedom from. Once we realize we don't have to keep running scared, or that we have to try earning brownie points with God, well then there comes a serious question. Now that we are freed from the bad stuff, how should we live our lives? <clears throat> What should we spend our time on earth doing? Or in short, what are we now freed for? Paul gives us some answers as we continue reading through his letter to the Galatians. In fact, a line from last week's reading bears repetition, where he writes, You were called to freedom, brothers and sisters, only. Do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. Freed from sin, Paul says, and obviously not freed just so we can keep on sinning by selfishly indulging ourselves. No, Paul says, we are freed from sin and freed for serving each other in love. This week's reading continues this thought of being freed from sin and freed for loving others, where Paul writes, Let us work for the good of all, adding we should especially do good for the family of faith, our sisters and brothers in Christ. Note that Paul does not stay in the abstract, nice ideas but no real-world applications. Oh no. He gets down and dirty, knowing full well that serving others, perhaps especially serving fellow church members, can be challenging. Bear one another's burdens, he says. Really? I have to put up with so-and-so telling me for the fifteenth time about all their medical woes? I have to keep telling myself that you know who must just be having another bad day when it seems like all they've had is bad days for the last 20 years? Yeah. Bear each other's burdens. And just when we think we might catch a break, get some freedom from the needs and demands and just plain personality quirks of our fellow sisters and brothers in Christ, oh no. Paul says we have to keep going. When freedom from becomes freedom for, the need for love never takes a break. He says, Let us not grow weary in doing what is right. 
for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. Yep, we just got to keep on keeping on. Now the founders of our country had to do a lot of things quickly to establish a nation that could take care of itself. And we almost lost everything all over again during the War of 1812 with England. <clears throat> but thankfully, by then we had shifted enough from freedom from to freedom for, such that we had taken responsibility for ourselves and we could defend ourselves and our young nation. Freedom for meant lots of Americans had to shoulder responsibilities to serve others so that the nation could survive and grow. The same is true of us as Christians in a church. That original spark of joy when we first realize that we have been freed from has to transform into a mature, responsible freedom for serving others in love. And yes, despite how challenging it might be at times. And of course, serving others in love is not limited to the walls of the church. God expects us to proclaim the kingdom to our friends and community and to do our part to help God's kingdom break into the entire world in little ways, here and there. Jesus' command that his disciples love one another certainly defined them as different from other people of their day. But the one another part quickly spread to everyone they knew. Because that's how love works. You cannot keep love bottled up. You can't, or shouldn't, be nice just to fellow church members, but then treat the rest of the world like trash. In fact, we have a name for people who behave like that. We call them hypocrites. No, a Christian has to not only talk the talk, but also walk the walk, and do so with everyone. Otherwise, the love really isn't sincere, and we are failing in doing what being freed for is all about. So on this Independence Day weekend, go ahead and celebrate the 200 plus years of history that have brought us to this point today. But at the same time, remember that, as far as God is concerned, freedom, independence, from, simply kicks things up a notch. We are freed from tyranny, whether you mean old King George III or the punishment for sin, and we are freed for being responsible citizens of both our nation and God's kingdom. Amen. As the psalmist writes, Weeping may last the night, but joy comes with the morning. God has turned our tears into shouts of thanksgiving. Let us be grateful for the many blessings in our lives as we ask God's blessing over our gifts that we receive. And let's join in our offertory response. We give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. Amen. And let us dedicate the gifts and offerings that the churches have received. Bountiful God, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. May the offerings we bring before you this day be a sign of our commitment to labor in your vineyard. May the gifts we share with the world reflect our commitment to do good for others. Amen. We come now to the service of Holy Communion. And if you didn't have a chance to get your elements ready, just pause the video for a moment. I'm getting mine ready right here. We'll be here when you come back. Let's continue. Great is God's name, and great is the table of Christ. As we approach this meal, 
we ponder the steadfast love of God. We praise God's name to the ends of the earth. Blessed are you. <clears throat> Blessed are you, O Lord our God, creator of the universe. For you made all things and called them good. Earth, sea, and sky are yours. Every tree and bird, each seed sprouting, every firefly twinkling, and every drop of precious water is a witness to your grace. We give you thanks this day for your generosity, for you are the giver of every good gift. Today, we especially give you thanks for the gift of freedom, for those who have worked and sacrificed to honor that gift, and for the many privileges we enjoy in this place. We thank you for the gift of this community, the gift of curious minds and ingenuity, the privilege of learning and teaching. We thank you for your Son, who became flesh, lived among us, and died and rose again for our sake, in order that we might know the gift of your abundant life, starting right here in these bodies, right here in this body of Christ. When we forget that all we have, from every tiny creature to the vastness of the universe, is a gift from you, call us back to your truth. When we are tempted by the allure of my way or the highway, remind us that we are but one part of your body on earth. When we separate this earth from your spirit, give us eyes to see and ears to hear your breath in every heartbeat, every gust of wind, every creaking joint, every neighbor's laugh, and enemy's tear. We hold in your light those who live in fear, in violence, under oppression. We remember your people in Ukraine and in Harrisburg, across our nation and here in our own community. We remember them and pray for their needs. Now as we gather at this table, we remember that many are hungry. As we share the cup together, we remember that many are thirsty. May the day come, and may it come soon, when there will be food and water for all. May the day come soon, when justice and peace take the place of violence. May the day come soon, when your freedom may be known by all of creation. Many grains come together to make bread. As we eat this feast, draw us together in your spirit. Make us again into your body, loving, serving, and caring for the world. And so we join with all creatures in heaven and in earth, saying the praises of God. Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full, are full of the majesty of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Now through the power of the presence of the Holy Spirit, may the elements that we have prepared be for us, even as Jesus said, his body and his blood. So now I invite you to take and eat the body of Christ broken for us. Now take and drink the blood of Christ which has been poured out for the forgiveness of the sins of the world. If your young people are still with you around the device, gather them. Gently place a hand on their shoulder or on, on their head and join me in the spirit of a prayer for them. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your followers to not chase the kids away, but let them come to you. So we present our young people this day 
we present them to you for a blessing. A blessing of knowing you and your love and your salvation. And also we ask a blessing of protection as they live in a changing world. Keep them safe, Lord. Keep them safe. Amen. And let us join together in our prayer of thanksgiving. We give you thanks, O Lord, for joining us in the meal. And we give you thanks for calling us to serve you in this world, and for one day welcoming us home into your world. Amen. So friends, go now and proclaim that the reign of God is near. Travel lightly, bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Work for the good of all, avoid temptation, and pray that God will send more laborers into the harvest. Now may God give you mercy and peace. May Christ Jesus give you power over all that would harm you. And may the Holy Spirit produce within you a rich harvest of joy and life. And we're adding something new into the service starting today. I'm sure somewhere in your background you sang the Amen. Now, you know, I usually avoid music during these recordings because my voice is eh. But somehow I just can't see how we can say Amen, Amen, Amen. So join me in singing it. Amen, Amen, Amen. God bless you.